Okay, uh, let's do a momentum example, or I'm mean, sorry, a collisions example. So I'm just going to make up a problem and then we'll, we'll just do it from there. Uh, so suppose that I have two cars. This one's a thousand kilograms. And it's moving th this way um, 10 meters per second. And then I have a truck. I'm just making these numbers up as usual. 2,000 kilograms going straight. Let's call that south and east at uh, 15 meters per second. And they collide. And they stick together. Um, <coughs> and, you know, it's ice, so there's no friction. They could, that's why they crash, right? Because there's, they couldn't stop. If they would have stopped, they would have stopped. But they couldn't. So the roads are completely icy. It happens sometimes. No one's hurt. Everyone's okay. Uh, car is pretty messed up. Here's a truck, like that. It's going to move it some down like that. Okay, so there's no friction. So we have this collision, like this. I'm trying to stop. My analog brakes everything. Ah! Okay. So the question is, um, what's the final velocity vector for this wreckage combined wreckage? Okay, so <clears throat> when we're dealing with a collision. Um, the important thing is that if the interaction happens over a short time or there's no external forces, then the force this exerts on that one is the same as the force this exerts on that one for the same amount of time. So you remember this marker, not good. I had another marker there, this. So you remember F, oh, that one's even worse. The blue one. We're going blue today. F delta T equals a change in momentum. So if the force on this one for the same time is the actually opposite force, opposite direction as the force on this one, on that one, then they have opposite changes in momentum. We can also write that as uh, delta P total equals zero. <coughs> or we could write that as P1 total equals P2 total. So the initial momentum equals the final momentum, and that's your conservation momentum. And I derived this in my book, so you can look at it there. I don't want to spend too much time on that. I want to actually use it. Okay, so let's call this the X direction and the Y direction. I can get my total initial momentum, <clears throat> and then I'll just set that equal to my total final momentum and everything should work out okay. Um, I already put in numbers, but let me put some variables along with this. Let me call this uh, mass 1, and let's call this V11. Uh, yeah, because that's the velocity of object 1 at the beginning. Okay, it, we don't need that in this case, but that's M2, V21. And then after they collide, we'll call this mass m1 and it'll have a velocity vector v i guess 3 2 see i didn't really need that cuz it's it's a new object but okay so if i write down the initial total momentum i get p1 total or initial momentum it's going to be the momentum of this which is going to be m1 v1 plus m2 v1 1 m2 V21. Let me go ahead and put in the numbers because otherwise it, it doesn't get any different than that. Um, so here I have uh, V11 is in the x direction and V21 is in the negative y direction. So this is going to give me P1 total is going to be M1, 1,000 kilograms. I'll leave off the units just for simplicity. It really should be there. Uh, V1 is going to be 10 meters per second x hat minus 2,000 times 15 meters per second y hat. <clears throat> so you see, I have that one is in the x hat direction, that one's in the negative y hat direction. Okay. Um, I can't I can't add that into one number because they're in different directions. Okay. So 
Uh, I can get this as a value though. That will be 10, 1, 2, 3 kilogram meters per second x hat minus, let's see, 5, 2, 30, 3, 30,000, yeah, 30,000 kilogram meters per second y hat. That's it. Okay, so I'm actually done because that's my initial momentum, that's my final momentum. P2 total, forgive my coffee pot, it's going off. P2 total is going to be the same thing. And, but I could also write that as M1 plus M2 V32. Okay, so what if I want to, just, if I just want to find V32, I can divide both sides by M1 plus M2. And remember, P2 total is P1 total, okay? So uh, M1 plus M2 is going to be 3,000. So let's divide both sides here by 3,000, and I get V32 equals 10,000 or 3,000. And that's kilogram meters per second divided by kilograms, gives me meters per second, x hat, minus <coughs> 30,000 over 3,000 meters per second y hat. So it's going to be uh, 10 over 3 meters per second x hat minus 10 meters per second y hat. There, that's my final velocity. That was it. Okay. Does that make sense? First, should it be moving faster in the x or y direction? Well, this has a larger mass and a larger velocity, so <clears throat> that's going to make it have a velocity more downward than that way. And that agrees with this right here. Right? It's three times as much. Um, is it going, okay, let's see. What if I wanted to find uh, this angle theta that it goes at in the speed? Well, I could find the magnitude of the speed, V32. The magnitude would be the square root of 10 squared over 3 squared plus 10 squared. And that would give me um, the magnitude of that vector. If I wanted to find that angle theta, from the net <clears throat> below the x-axis, then I would just say, here's my vector. That's v32y. This is v32x. So that angle theta is going to be tangent of theta. It's going to be opposite over adjacent. So it's v32y, or 10. 10. Just use the 10, because I've, I've already drawn the direction over 3, 2, 1, x, which is 10 over 3. Oh, watch. I, I, that was weird. Okay. But there you see it. There is one other thing that we can do, and I'm not going to do it. But the other thing to do is say, how much, <clears throat> how much energy was lost? How much kinetic energy was lost? Or what was the change in energy of this whole thing? You know, it got, it had to take configuration change energy, all the things got smashed together, there was sound, there was increased temperature and all that stuff. So where'd that come from? Well, kinetic energy is not conserved. The, the initial kinetic energy is not the final kinetic energy. But the energy is, because there's no external work. So I can say uh, E1 equals E2. Or K <coughs> kinetic energy of object 1 to begin with plus kinetic energy of object 2 equals kinetic energy of object 3 afterwards plus other energy. Actually, really, it should be a delta other. So I, I can find that. I know the, the speed. I can find those two. So I could find the energy. Okay. But kinetic energy is not conserved. Momentum is conserved if the collision is either short or there's no external forces. Energy is conserved only if it's an elastic collision. 